And I, as one who did not support the health care bill originally, I do think it's, it's important to recognize, as has been happening in this discussion, what's working with regard to the health care bill, what's already been implemented that's making a real difference in people's lives. And the reason I did not support repeal of the health care bill both times we brought it up, was because I have the fourth most Medicare beneficiaries of any district in the country, 135,000 Medicare beneficiaries. And many of them are caught in the donut hole, what we've come to know, that gap in coverage in the Part D prescription drug program. We are now entering the third year of the phase-in to completely close that donut hole. Already, people who are in the donut hole have received a $250 compensation for coverage through the donut hole. They're getting a steep discount on brand name drugs. And moving forward, as I say, in the years to come, they're going to completely close the donut hole and get coverage all the way through. That's something that would not have happened if we had repealed the health care bill. Small businesses all across the country that struggle with the skyrocketing cost of health care that's affecting every family and every business in this country, they're getting a tax credit to help offset the cost, to provide coverage if they choose to their employees. That's something that's making a real difference in the district that I represent. Being able to cover people up to age 26, often recent college graduates struggling in the down economy. We're talking about the job market today. Uh, the parents' plan being able to take for a short period of time those, those young adults after they've graduated school and maybe in transition in their life or in the job market that's making a real difference for people that I represent. And people with pre-existing conditions, children today beginning in 2014, adults will not be able to be denied coverage because of a chronic health condition. That's something that's long overdue in this country. And those are all things that have been implemented. They are in the law today. They're taking effect. They're impacting people. And, and we can't overlook that. The legal issues have been decided. This is settled law now. And what we need to do is make sure, especially with the Medicaid ruling, which was not talked about as much because the court focused on the mandate, but with the states being able to opt out on the Medicaid side, we have to find a way for health care providers to be guaranteed coverage for people who come to their door, whether they be a hospital, a physician, long-term care, whatever it may be, because when the health care bill was put into place before it became law, the deal that was made in return for universal coverage covering people in this country was the providers, all those, those provider groups I mentioned, gave a little. They understood they had to t take some cuts to help offset the cost of that, the cost to the government and to the taxpayer. Well, now the court has said that states can opt out of part of that through the Medicaid program. We need to make sure that those health care providers are able to keep their end of the bargain and that the government keeps their end of the bargain by finding a way to cover everybody. So I, I did just want to add that perspective. Again, as someone who didn't originally support the bill, there are things that are working and have been implemented, and I commend both my friend from California and New York for having this discussion.